here today to share with you another sew along. So today I'm going to be making this simplicity shirt. So I'm going to be making view B. And as you can see it's in this lovely check fabric here. And I'm going to be using this wonderful soft cotton. It's a cotton poly mix so it's 55% cotton and 45% polyester. And this fabric comes in three colours. Now, if you'd like to make the same shirt as me, it's all going to be linked in a bundle below. So you'll get this fabric in the colourway of your choosing, the pattern, you'll get a matching thread, the buttons, and some interfacing. And this will all be linked below. So all you need to do is choose your fabric option. So if you'd like a different colour, go ahead and click on the colour option that you prefer. Now, before we get started, a couple of things I'd like to mention. We love it if you go on over and join the Minerva Craft Club. Now, if you join the Minerva Craft Club, you'll get 10% on all your orders for a whole year. So that's a really good deal. Another thing we'd like you to do is to create a free account. So when you create a free account, you join our lovely sewing community. You can share all your projects, save future projects, um, like and save all the fabrics and notions that you like. And you'll create your own little folder, which you can come back to later. So when something catches your eye, like a video like this one or any others, you can come back and sew along and pick the fabrics that you've created on your list. So go ahead and do that now, it's all free and you'll be able to join in, like and comment on other posts and that you'll be able to share your creations as well. So before we begin cutting out our pattern pieces we need to decide which option we're going for. So if you're going to sew along with me I'm sewing along with option B and then you need to decide which option you'd like to go for. There's just a few little details that are different. So a different cuff on one, some pockets and a little bit of detailing. So the basic shirt is the same. So no matter which option you're going for, you can sew along with me, but just check if you're adding in some of the extra details and you may have a couple of extra pattern pieces to cut. So another thing that you need to remember, check the back of your pattern and make sure you check the measurements. Don't just go for your standard dress size because all patterns and bodies of course are different. So you need to check your measurements for the tape measure, bust, waist and hips and then check the pattern size that is right for you based on these measurements. Now that said we can go ahead and cut out our pattern pieces and we're going to do that now. Right so here we have our pieces cut. So this is your back piece and you want to cut one on the fold. So your grain line is going this way, this bit is to the fold and you want to mark all your notches here, here and here. So this is your back, cut one on the fold. Here is your sleeve. Now you're going to cut two of this one. Here is your grain line. Mark all your notches and these circles here because this is where you're going to ease stitch to ease in your sleeve to your shoulder piece. Mark your notches and your pleats. And also mark this direction line because this is the, the direction that you're going to pleat here. Here is your front piece. You're going to cut two of this one. So this is for all styles again. Mark your dart. Mark your notches. And this is your grain line. You can also mark your waistline as well to check this. And here is the mark where you lengthen or shorten. If you are a bit uh, shorter or taller, you can either 
add in a piece here, cut it here and add in the required amount depending on how tall you are or it can be folded up. So you may just want to check that depending on your height. Cut two of the front. Now here we have the front band. Now this is where your buttons and your buttonholes are going to go. So this one, you're going to cut two of this one and you're going to cut two of interfacing. Mark these lines because this is your fold line, this is your grain line and you also have the markings for the buttonholes. Now I don't tend to mark the buttonholes on at this point, I would put them on after when it's on the garment I will place this piece back on and I will mark them then so I'll show you that then but you can do it now if you wish and you also need to mark your notches now for this particular piece for this style I've chosen to cut mine and turn it over and show you on the bias so we've got the pattern going on the diagonal now as you can see on the pattern you can use a contrasting fabric for the bands, the collar and the cuff and you can do that on any one of the styles. I'm not using a contrasting fabric but I would like the pattern going the other way so I've cut it on the bias so it's going to have interfacing stitched to the back, uh, iron to the back of it and then pressed in and stitched on so it won't stretch out and it is only a small piece it's nothing heavy that's going to pull it out of shape so it's fine to do that. So on this particular piece I've cut it on the diagonal so the check pattern is going in this direction and on the rest of my pieces it's straight on the straight grain. Just to make it look a little bit different like it does in the one on the front of cover. Now I've seen people do this pattern in all different uh, style variations and people have used different kinds of contrasting fabric for the bands and the collars and the cuffs polka dots or floral and that all looks great so you can really have fun with this. Here is your back yoke and again you want to cut two. So you cut two of fabric for this one. If you were using the contrasting fabric you would cut this in the contrast. I don't have the contrast so again what I've done is I've cut it on the diagonal just to make it look a little bit different. You have your grain line here if you're cutting it on the straight as I said I've cut mine on the bias. Make sure you're marking all these notches and your front central marking. Here we have the cuffs. So for the cuffs you want to cut four pieces and then two of interfacing. Mark your notches. Now here we have your collar pieces. So here you want to cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. Mark your notches, this is the central line. This is the grain line, unless you're cutting it on the diagonal like I am. Notches here. And on this one, here is your central line. And mark these notches. Cut two of fabric, cut one of interfacing. And that's all your pieces cut. Depending on what style you are making, you may have additional pieces. So if you're making style A or D, you will have the pocket pieces and this one also the pocket flaps. If you're making style D, you will have different sleeve pieces and also a smaller cuff. There is also a front yoke on style A that you will be cutting if you are making this version. So your first job stitching now is to make sure that you've got your cotton on and make sure you've put half on your bobbin and then we're going to do a line of stay stitching around the front neck 
on both front pieces and also around the neck of your yoke pieces. This is just to stop things moving around. This is your first job. Just like this. I'm going to do that on both front pieces and around the neck of the yoke pieces as well. Right, your next job is to stitch in your dots on your front. So here we have our markings just here, where we just snipped it on the pattern. And then I don't know if you can see just faintly, there's my little mark that I made with my chalk. So going to this point, stitching from the outside and running off, I'm going to bring those two notches together, pop that under the machine. So my notches are there, my starter going. Back tack a little. And then we're heading towards that little mark that we made. So mine is just here. If you can see that. Just here where my finger is. So I'm stitching along there. I'm going to make my stitch a little bit smaller. Run off the edge. Now you can knot these threads at this point as well. You might want to leave them a little bit longer. I have actually done a couple of bag tacks there. Some people like to just run straight off and knot those threads. So leave them longer if you're going to do that. And as you can see, it goes to a point. Now here you have your bottom back piece. And there is a central notch and then two notches either side. You're going to do a line of stitching from this notch to this notch, just a few millimetres away there. Make your stitch a little bit longer to do this and this is so that you can gather it a little bit in the centre before you add your yoke. So, starting from the first notch, a few millimetres away, make sure it's on a long stitch. Don't back tight because you're going to be pulling it in a second. yourself some thread and then you can gather this just a little. So don't gather it just yet, you're going to add one of your yoke pieces. So make sure you've got the right side of the fabric because you want right sides together. So I'm turning mine over, that's my right side. And on this one, that's my right side. And what you need to find, if you've marked it, if you haven't, fold it in half, is your central marking. Now mine, when I cut it, must have only gone on one piece. I'm going to just put it again with a little notch there. And you're going to match that centre notch first of all, just there. And I would add a pin so that doesn't move out of place. Now, as you can see, your bottom piece hangs over a little bit going to gather it just slightly with those gathered stitches, just pull them until this matches up. Now what you will get when you've pulled those gathers is just a few little gathers in the centre like this. Now you can stitch over those first before you do your main seam if you want to keep those in place. Also one thing to watch if you're using a check fabric is when you do your uh, seam across here, your stitching, you're going to want to follow accurately one of these lines on the checks because you don't want it looking wonky. Now when you do your seam it's 1.5 seam allowances included on this pattern. If you're not sure about that you can mark it with tape on your machine or you can make yourself a little piece of paper like this that you've measured out 
just to check. Now once you get used to it, you'll be doing that by eye. But this is just something that you can use as a little trick. Use your piece of paper, add in a pin and you know where you're stitching. So you're going to stitch that seam now. Right, the next bit, on the pattern it tells you to put it in so that this is sort of in a sandwich and then you're rolling it all up and putting it inside. I know that that's going to drive some of you crazy and be very confusing because I think it is very confusing on the pattern. So this is how I always do it when I'm doing a shirt. Get your yoke, your other piece of yoke, and you're going to want, because the right side is going to be facing this way, flip it downwards like this. Match up your notches again. And you're going to just sew that on the top. Now go in that line of stitching there. So your yoke's going to be underneath the yoke that you're adding and you're following the line of stitching that you've already done. Bring you in a little bit so you can see. So just below that line of stitching that you've done already. Make sure that those notches still line up. Just take your time so it's neat and even. Keep those notches in line. Here's your inside of your garment. So what you're going to do, you've got, this is the inside, and here you've got the wrong side facing the right side, and you're going to do a small seam here, so it's like a French seam. It is a French seam. And you're just going to do a small seam, less than one point five, quite small. If you find it's at all uneven, just trim a little bit off. Just a tiny amount, just make it level. And then you can just flip that over. And you're going to stitch a small seam again, catching in that bit. So now you can see we're on the inside and you've got a neat edge. Here we are, we've still got a clean seam on the inside and the outside without the, all that rolling and messing about and trying to figure out which way it goes. And what you can actually do now is you can top stitch that down if you wish or just press it and you haven't got any raw edges on the inside shoulder there. So press it down or top stitch, it's up to you. So now you want a line of top stitching all the way along your yoke. So where it's all sandwiched inside there, just a millimetre or so away from the edge. Again, on the wrong side, you want to find your notches for your pleats. Now mine are a little faint here, so I'm just gonna get my sleeve piece and pop it on again. I'm just going to re-notch those because I've not done that very clearly. You might want to do the same. If I can see my markings, I just can't see my notches there. So here are my markings. And this is showing me 
but I'm going to take that notch over to that one and that's going to be a plea. So you get your pin and you're going to pin that one there and then here we have the next one. So here's a notch, here's a notch and we're going this way with our plea. So bring those two notches together, another pin I'm going to do just a few stitches here and a few stitches here. I'm not going to sew straight across. I'm going to sew a few going up because that's going to be enclosed in our cuff anyway. It just makes it a bit more secure. Now here on your sleeve, you're going to cut out this V where it's marked. And this is where you're going to use your continuous strip. Now you're going to cut two pieces like this on the straight grain. They're about three centimetres wide about 20 centimetres in length and this is going to be stitched on here. Now you want your right side of your sleeve. So check where your right side of your fabric is. Fold your strip in half and you're going to stitch it close to the edge in one continuous line. So you're going to open this V up as you stitch along. So you're going to stitch just a couple of stitches just here where the V meets and you're going to carry it all the way along here. Your next job on the top of the sleeve is to find where those dots were and where you've transferred your markings. This is your central notch. Here is my first marking, here is my second marking. You're going to do a line of stitching for the ease along here. So don't back tack because you want to be able to pull your threads. Just hold on to it. Large, larger stitch for your largest stitch. Round to that marking, no back tacking, just leave it. As you can see that will gather when you pull it. And when you turn it through, you're going to be able to fold that over just there. Adjust it so that it's level. And then you can top stitch that down. Now you're gonna sew down your side seam of your sleeve. Now if you cut your pattern pieces neatly, all your checks will match up at this point. So just check that there, check your notches and then sew down this seam. Now I'm going to finish my seam off after I've done this. So you can either zigzag it or you can overlock it. If you wanted to you could sew it the other way around and do a French seam like we did on the shoulder and then flip it back over and stitch it again but you would have to make sure you did the seem really small the first time. I'm just going to do it ordinary and then I'm going to overlock it off after. So next you're going to stitch right round your cuff and then cut off the corners. Then we're going to turn it through and poke out those corners. So I've finished down my sleeve now, I have my vent and I've stitched round my cuff. So what you're going to do now, you get the right side of your sleeve at one side of the vent and then with your cuff line it up right sides facing. So put a pin in there and you're going to stitch all the way along to the other side. Just let your seams lie flat. And 
stitch it all the way along, matching your notches as well as you So now how you have your cuff on, when you turn it to the wrong side, you're going to fold in that same amount of seam allowance. Hold it in and pin it. And then you're going to top stitch along there and about a foot space away all the way around your cuff. And this is how your cuff will look when you've done that. You're going to sew your side seams. So turn it so that your right sides are together. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you match your notches. So match your pattern if you've cut it with pattern matching. Now, as you can see here, match that up all the way along. As you can see, I've edged mine now. So you might want to zigzag it or overlock it at this point and then do your side seam. So you can press that open nicely. point where you've got your front door it's never going to match because you've taken in the pattern there so don't worry about this as long as you've pattern matched all the way up and then once you get to that door obviously it's going to run off because you've taken it in there so the pattern changes so don't worry about that matching at that point where the dart is because that will never happen because you've changed the pattern. So now you've got your side seams finished, we're going to add our sleeves. So here's your front, and you want to find the front of your sleeve. So look at your notches. So the back, where you have the two notches, here you have your centre point, and here you have your one notch. So open that up and match all your notches. So now that you have pinned it, this is where your ease stitches come into play. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull this very gently and that's going to help the sleeve fit in there. So just pull that so that it gathers just a little bit. And that helps you ease it in. And as you do that, you can add your pins just on the outside and then you'll stitch on the inside. So this line of stitching will be hidden. And do that on the other side as well. And then you're ready to sew. Now once you've inserted your sleeve, there shouldn't be any creases on the other side, but you have got a little bit of extra movement up here from where you did that easing. Now at this point I would go and try it on, and that's what I've just done. And just check the fit on your shoulder that it's right for you. Now I've just tried this and that is true to size and that is a perfect fit on my shoulder and also the cuff is hanging exactly in the right place. So before you do both sleeves, I would go and just try it on and check that that is just right for you. And then you can make any tiny adjustments here before you go any further. So now you're going to apply your front bands to your front of your shirt. So on the wrong side of your shirt, you're going to take the long unnotched side the notch side you're going to press it in 1.5 and the other side you're going to stitch to the wrong side of your shirt so wrong side right side of your band facing you're going to stitch the seam all the way down so as you can see you will have some overlap at the bottom and that's going to be turned under 
when you now fold your band to the front of the shirt. So you let this seam lap towards the band. This bit that you've pressed or pinned under will then go over, tuck these pieces in, and then this is going to be top stitch down. So you can move your pin if you have one like I have there. To call that bit in when I come to stitch it. So you see, this was facing outwards. Here is your seam. The front band is flopping over on top of the front of the shirt and being top stitched down on top. Right, now you have both front bands on, you're going to start to apply your collar. So you want your piece of your collar stand, so that's this piece, with the interfacing on it. So right side, so if you look at it here, you the, the curved part is the top. This bottom part, the notches here, this is going to your shirt. So the right side of the shirt with your notches and the right side of your collar stand. Line up those notches and pin it there. And you're going to pin that all the way along. You're going to want to allow your seam allowance at the edge here. So let it hang over with your seam allowance there. So put a pin there on either side. So seeing at the other side, there is your front band. Just going to just take a touch off that, just to level that up. Allow your seam allowance again at that side. So let that collar stand hang over because you're going to be stitching the other piece to it there. And once you've stitched that collar stand on, you're going to want to notch it all the way along. You may want to trim a little bit off as well, but definitely notch it so that you haven't got too much bulk. And I'm also going to trim a little bit off that. And now you're going to sew the outer part of your collar. So you're not sewing on the notch side. You are stitching on the opposite side. So you've got your right sides together. I'm going to do our seam all the way around and then turn it through. Before you turn it through, you're going to want to cut off your corners there where it comes to a point. And you may want to trim a little excess off here as well. So I'm going to fold that over to do that. Just to get rid of some of that bulk. And the same on the sides. Once you've done this, you can turn it through and poke your corners through. So 
So here you have your collar stand with your notches here and here and here you have your outer collar that you've just made. So you want the facing side downwards that's going to go to the collar stand and you're going to match those notches. So you've got the notches here on your collar that you've just made facing to this collar stand. Match those and pin and the same at the other side there. Pin. So on your other piece of collar stand you're going to press under the 1.5 seam allowance. You're going to take your collar that you've already done to here. Here is your outer collar, here is your collar stand and you're going to stitch this over the top. So here's your curved edge. Just open that up while you start. And you're going to start from here, just here. One point five and follow this line of stitching here that you've just done. So when you've stitched that you then turn it through and here where you've pressed that goes under and let this seam go upwards and this is just going to tuck in here and you can top stitch that all the way along or hand stitch if you prefer that part. And then when you've finished that, then you can top stitch around your collar stand. Now at this point, you will have your collar on and your collar stand and your front band. Now you can see the effect of cutting the front band on the bias because we have our pattern for our shirt front going this way and then we have it on the diagonal on the front band there. So that just gives it a bit of interest on the front rather than it all being the same. Now on your collar and your neck band, you will now have top stitched it both sides, close to the edge, around your collar. And now that you've stitched on your front band, we are going to make the buttonholes. Now, if you didn't do so before, you can get your pattern piece again and check your buttonhole placings by placing it on. Now, you might not be happy where the buttonholes lie in this uh, particular garment, so I would suggest that you try on your shirt and decide where you would like the first uh, button below the one on the collar to lie, because if you're a person that wears their uh, shirt open a lot, you might like it to fall a little bit lower down. So do try it on and check that they're right for you. You can still use the pattern piece uh, to gauge your spacings. So please try and play around with that and mark it with pins first and see that you're happy before you go ahead and make those buttonholes. So we're going to do that now. I'm got, going to do it on this machine because this is a four step buttonhole on this one and this is the one I prefer. So here is my buttonhole foot for this particular machine and here are my buttons that I'm going to be using for this shirt. So here we are, we pop it in there and it fits in this space. There we have our foot on. So if you find one of your markings that you've made on your pattern and push your foot back, line it up so your marking sort of wants to be in the centre, make sure it's all lined up central. And on here we start at 12 on this one so depending on where on your machine your buttonhole functions are You'll have to check that. Check it in your manual if you're not sure and this is the first time you've done this. So on this particular machine, we start at 12 and that goes across. 
make sure that your needle is in the upright position and then we go to 13 and this is going to go this side now it won't go any further than where your button is in this placement here And then we go back to this function, which is 14. And then finally 15 will come down the other side of your button hole. Now just take your time and go steady, because depending on which fabric you are using, it may be quite a bit thicker here, especially with the uh, facing on the other side. So cut your threads. Now at this point, it's best to snip your buttonholes with sharp scissors. Some people may want to use their um, seam ripper, but that can give for quite a, a messy finish. So if you take your buttonhole and fold it and snip into it with your sharp scissors you'll get a better finish that way. Don't forget to also mark your buttonhole on your, both your sleeves. So your buttonhole wants to be on the part that laps over when we made the vent on the back. So the top part that laps over, that's where your buttonhole is going to be. So now that you've finished your buttonholes, we're going to complete our bottom hem. Now I've overlocked mine, you may want to zigzag stitch that and we're just going to turn it under just a small amount and this is because it's a curved hem. So we're just doing a small hem all the way around the bottom. So if you've overlocked, try and keep in that line of overlock stitching or your zigzag stitch. As I said before, if you wish to press it, this can also help you keep your hand. So I like to sew my buttonhole, buttons on by hand. So you've got your buttonhole. And I always feel that if you sew your buttons on on the machine, it can be quite tricky. But also, because they're done so quickly, I feel that they can come undone all at once. Sometimes you can catch a thread. I don't know if you've ever done this on a curl and it just all comes off at once. Whereas they seem to be more secure if you sew them on by hand. So I like to check. So here's my buttonhole that I've completed. And place it over the top of your other front band. And just check the position of that. So I'm going to mark that there with a pin. With a good length of cotton. Knot it at the bottom. and then trim off any excess. And where you have your mark with your pin or your chalk, your button, you're going to start there with one stitch, do another over the top to secure it. We know we're in the right place, we can take that pin out. a couple of stitches to make sure that that's secure and that's not going to come undone and I don't go all the way through either I'm just doing that sort of in the top layers and then you add your button now you can either go straight across so you've got two parallel lines or you can do it in a cross So now I am going through because I didn't want that knot showing on the other side, but it's okay to have this showing. So it's just a couple of stitches. So if you keep them in exactly the same place, then we do a couple going this way. So I, I'm opting to do mine in a cross. And come through the top buttonhole and go across that way. Now 
Now that's nice and secure, so you can either choose to do, you know, on the back or come inside here and do it behind the button. I'm going to show you here because it's easier on the back. So, make a stitch, wrap your cotton around twice, round your needle, and then pull it through, and then you've got a good secure knot. And then trim that close to the shirt. So here is the finished shirt. Pleats at the back. You can see this was cut on the diagonal. And the back piece was cut on the straight. If you have any questions, please pop them below and we'll do our best to help you. Also, have you sewn this pattern before? Please share your ideas and mates below. We'd all love to see what you're up to. Well, I hope that sew along was useful to you. And remember, all of the items mentioned today will be linked in a bundle below. So if you'd like to make this top in the same fabric I did, just click on the items below to get the kit. You can also choose a different colourway or fabrics of your choosing. Remember to like and follow Minerva to get more videos uh, like this. That way you will get more content and videos like this one every month. Remember to create your own account so you can save your favourite fabrics and notions and video ideas like this one to come back to later. Remember the Minerva Craft Club is open to everyone. Do go ahead and join that and you'll get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. Well, that's all for today and I hope to see you soon with another sew along. Bye for now.